Hello and welcome. My name is Jenny Mutu. I am the founder of the Academy and I am about to be on the online prosperity show with Prosper. You're about to hear all about potential leadership and how to get to who you are at your very core. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Taroving, and today we have an extraordinary guest who's transforming the way we think about leadership and personal growth. Now, Jenny, how are you doing today? Hello, Prosper. I am very well, thank you. How are you? Fantastic. Well, the pleasure is all mine. I'll, I'm still thinking about the juice that you're having there. And uh, would you like to just share with our audience? Because this is the first time I've heard somebody who's got a unique juice that they carry around with them and it's actually good for them. What what, what was that again? Sure. Um. All right. So it's two limes, one tablespoon of honey and um, hot water, basically in a jug. And I just drink that instead of tea or coffee. And it's, Absolutely. it's delicious. I like that. I like that because I saw you enjoying that. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's got to be something to that. First of all, I thought it was just a lemonade, but apparently it is an actual juice. Now, for those that are watching right now, it's this is not a cooking show. We are going to be talking about leadership. So you might be wondering, what are we going on about? So with us today is Jenny Imutu. She is the CEO of She Leadership and the founder of Academy. Now, Jenny is a trained hypnotherapist, coach, author, and international speaker with a passion for in, um, empowering young people to live their full potential. She's here to share her unique insights and powerful strategies that are changing lives and shaping the leaders of tomorrow. Plus, I think we're going to be uncovering a lot of fascinating stories and lessons from her incredible journey. Because before we got started, Jenny was telling me that she's lived her life backwards. Now, I think you don't want to miss out what's about to unfold. Now, Jenny, once again, thank you for um, coming to the show today. Maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about your background and what actually inspired you to create She Leadership and Academy. Okay, um, no problem. So um, I guess it started, well, it started over 24 years ago or 24 years ago. Um, but before I go there, Prosper, I want to ask you a question and your audience a question. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where you were just so frustrated that um, you said a version of, oh, no, not this freaking beep again? <laughs> um, have you ever been in that situation? Well, I'll tell you something. By the time we're recording this, it's the first uh, week of July, first day of financial year, and it was the first day of school holidays yesterday. Can I pick on something that actually happened? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to share? <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, there's this is there's a lot of things that happen, especially when it comes to uh, business, but when let me let me not put it onto my kids, but when it comes to my business, there's certain things that you kind of feel like they shouldn't be happening again. They should be solved for we know better than this already. So, I mean, without just going into details, maybe you've got uh, a few examples that you can share with us there. All right, sure, I will. Um, so it's 2019 and uh, the... We are somewhere in the midst of COVID, whether it's at the beginning, um, the middle, you know, not the middle, but the very sort of um, beginnings of that unfolding. And uh, I'm in a coaching Zoom room with a room full of other women. <clears throat> and uh, it, it suddenly becomes very clear to me that uh, this ethos and philosophy and determination I had lived my life by and thinking that I was making some progress, um, something happened in that room that day and I was confronted with that expression of not this bleep, bleep again. <laughs> right? And I was so full of frustration because 
up until that point, I had been investing 19 years of my life in personal development. I've done anything and everything that you could think of. And my life still wasn't working. And in that day, on that day in that coaching room, I realized I I got the reality that that was what was happening, that my life wasn't working. You see, my story really started 19 years before that, when I held my daughter in my arms for the first time. And I got this message. And like some people are saying this message from spirit, whatever, whatever your belief is. But I got this message very loud and clear in my mind that the sins of the father get passed to the son. And that was what was impressed upon me the first time I held my daughter. And I knew, uh, despite being very green in my life at that point, that I had to deal with whatever trauma I had been through in my life, whatever baggage I was carrying so that I wouldn't put it on this child. And so we fast forward and we're at 2019 and I realized that despite all this work I've done, all the journey that I've traveled, there was this barrier that I still wasn't getting past. There was this potential in me that I could not realize despite all of the effort and all of the investment that I had made. And um, I remember being in that room that day and, you know, I made a new decision about my life. And that decision was that Uh, I was coming to the point where my daughter's, you know, she's getting older. She doesn't need me as much as a a young adult and that I was going to have some freedom to rediscover and reinvent myself and my life. And um, sitting in that room that day with the reality of that things were still not working, I made this decision that the next 40 years of my life were not going to look the same as the past 40 years. And I went one step further and I said, that the next 40 years of my life, in fact, were going to be unrecognizable from the previous 40 years. So that if you were to compare those two sets of 40 years, assuming I lived that long, that you would think that actually they were two completely different humans who had lived that life. And um, I guess in a way my journey started from that point. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that. Is, isn't it true that people actually say life begins at 40? <laughs> yes. I don't know. I'm, I'm out to uh, keep redefining that. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, you're taking us back to a time where you had your daughter for the first time, as you have mentioned. And you realize that, like you said, the scenes of the son are passed on to the father the sins of the father are passed on to the son to yeah. the son right were you experiencing some sort of guilt at that particular moment or what what is it that may have made that message sink because so many people have messages coming to them at given times but that particular message stuck with you okay so you have so the context is i've literally just given birth They've just handed the baby to me. I'm in a state of complete vulnerability. My mental faculties are really on survival mode, so the critical thinking is not really happening, and this message drops in. So you know that this message is not me and my you know, inner critic or what my, my own thoughts. This is something else. And um, the impression it left on me was really this is my mission in life. Absolutely. These are the things that I need to be doing. You Great. Know? So, so is that why then you then took on 19 years of personal development so you could get rid of this trauma that you would have had at that particular moment? Um, It's a great way to put it. And thank you for um, letting me expand on that. For me, when that message came through, it was so clear that I needed to be the best version of me that I could be so that my daughter could go further faster. You know, it was probably about a year or two uh, within that time frame of, you know, her being one or two years old. I read a study. Now, don't ask me to validate this study because I read things and then they go into the ether. But it was, let's let's just say that my child raising, um, 
years were built on an experiment to make me the best version that I could be so that my daughter could go further faster. And it was based on this experiment of worms. So they had two groups of worms, group A and group B. And they took group A and they taught them how to do something. And then when they knew how to do that, they mashed them up and they fed them to group B. Group B had not been taught how to do this thing. But what they found was that group B inherently knew what group A had been taught. So I took that on board to start to think about if I became the best version of myself, then I was going to have to study and learn and do things that nobody in my family or in my background had done. I was going to have to overcome things that nobody in my background or, you know, had role modeled to me. And that by my doing that, that my daughter would then learn how to do those things, but that she would do it at a younger age. So if I'm 23, 24 and onwards learning these things, then maybe by the time she's 12 or 15 or 19, she's knowing things that I, I'm only just learning at 25. That was the hypothesis. And I'm not a scientist. <laughs> Absolutely. And and thank you so much for sharing that, because in essence, I mean, you don't necessarily need to be a scientist to be a mom. And mm. all you were doing was obviously creating an environment that your offspring was going to literally thrive off of. And from my understanding of this, this is a simple story of monkey see, monkey do. You wanted to now model the behavior that was not modeled for you, which then puts you in a position of, you know, teaching by actually doing. And and how did that go? Yeah, so um, it's been an interesting ride. Um, I, you know, there were times, I, I guess, you don't know how your kids are going to turn out, right? Like, you don't know, because you don't know what what about you, no matter how hard you work, you don't know what about you they're picking up in the unsaid, in the stuff that they're watching you do, but you, you know, that you might be demonstrating in your actions, but not speaking in your words, you know, and they're such sponges in that regard. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that I started to do was just read as much as I can and apply what I was reading. But I think one of the critical things was then sitting my daughter down and teaching her life lessons. So right from the very beginning of her life, whenever these life lessons opportunities came up, we would have a conversation about it. You know, so I remember her being in year six, for instance, and I was, you know, a single mom by that stage. And she's having trouble with friends at school who weren't really acting like friends. They were acting like frenemies, you know, <laughs> And um, so we had this conversation about whether these people uh, were really something that she needed in her life and whether she was going to have to find the strength to put some distance between her and those people because they were not good for her ultimately. They weren't good for her well-being. They weren't good for her mental health. They were causing her issues. Um, and that that required her now, like she's, what's year six, 11, 11 years old? to have the discernment to know and to tune in, how do I feel? How are these people making me feel? And then to have the courage to say, you know what, um, maybe we shouldn't be friends anymore. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, I think it was, uh, there's, there's a lot of people that talk about you, the average of the five people that you hang around. So obviously by imparting that sort of information um, to her, she now, like you say, has the discernment of picking and choosing the people that actually can and will be the right people for her. Now, as this was happening to your daughter, would that have been mirroring what would have been happening in your own personal life? Because as we see certain things, um, they would manifest somehow. That way, more lessons can actually come, um, you know, in, 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 in different forms. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the biggest and the most, you know, like, I guess I use critical a lot, but there's some really fundamental things around parenting, you know, for me and, and the demonstration of it was choice and consequence, for instance. So helping her understand that, you know, parents say, oh, you can do anything, you can be anything. Yes, you can. However, there is a consequence that you need to factor in, you know, and one of the things I thought I was going to regret was telling my daughter she could be anything. And she kind of took that on, but didn't take the consequence aspect of that conversation on, you know, and there was a bit of precociousness and preciousness and, you know, spoiled bratness coming out in her, right? We we dealt with that. I know I'll tell you how we dealt with that, but, but um, we started to, you know, have a look at these consequences. Consequences come not when you determine them to. They can come tomorrow. They can come five years from now. You won't have control of that consequence, but by God, you will have to deal with the, the reality of that consequence, you know? And so by, by cultivating those conversations with her, there were situations where, for instance, she's going to her dad's to stay. He's letting her watch a movie that I wouldn't let her watch. She knows that she makes a choice not to watch that movie. And not only that, but then she comes and tells me about it later because she understood that she didn't want to have to deal with the consequence of whatever that was, you know? And because she has no control over the consequence and she doesn't know what the consequence is going to be, like that's starting to shape how she's thinking. And at that stage, she's under 10 years old, you know? Absolutely. The The nice thing about all of this, Jenny, and thank you so much for sharing this detail, because it really then solidifies why you are now helping young people, um, you know, to lead because you've had that experience from the ground up, because so many people that are in positions of coaching or, um, you know, putting out content like you now are, may not have had that intricate you know, experience. Now tell us about the programs that you're offering at the moment. Sorry, say that again, Prosper. T tell us about the programs you're offering now. Okay, sure. Um, so the Academy is offering leadership and life skills for leaders to deal with the emerging future. And I think, you know, COVID is a perfect example of that. When you have leaders who are not prepared and not capable of dealing with the emerging future. With They don't have the agility in their character, in their emotional resilience to be able to deal with what's coming down the pipe. Um, they can't function for themselves, let alone for other people. So this program is about building that, uh, I call it emotional robustness and mental resilience to deal with that emerging future and to be able to navigate change. And you know, for me, the old model of leadership is dead. It's completely dead. You know, and we need something new. We need something that takes in the ecosystem in which our communities, our organizations, our businesses function, and to bring that community on a journey with us and that ecosystem on a journey with us. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't build businesses by ourselves. Um, with the way deep fake and cyber is going, we're going to need the community to be vigilant, to keep our communities, our businesses, our homes safe, you know? So that model of leadership where you got one guy at the front and he's leading the charges, well, one, people are, are too, there's too much mentally and emotionally to deal with that in the world that we live in today. And, and secondly, it's just not going to work going forward. So this is, this is a program that builds leadership and life skills in young people at the beginning of their career and adulting life. So they have the discernment. They understand the choice and consequence. They can uh, apply the critical thinking. They can really step back from what's happening and some of the propaganda and the, you know, all of that stuff and really look at things with an from an evaluative um, perspective to say, is this right? Is this for me? What's the narrative? And do I actually agree with that? Or am I going to stand back and question it? Fantastic. You see, what I really love about this is that whole choice and consequence that you taught your daughter and you literally had a live experiment going on at that particular time, dare I say that, but you now are imparting that you know, because there's a time, like you said, at 11, your child knew about discernment. And that's very difficult for a lot of 
kids these days who are being bombarded with all these influences, games, their friends, um, you know, even the internet in and of itself, you know, yes, some sites just pretend to ask if you're 18 or older and that's as far as it goes, you know, and so many kids are being exposed to so much where that they have a lot of choice and that choice also comes with a lot of consequences and things of that nature. So what is it that, what are some of the things that you take you know, these um, young uh, future leaders through so that, you know, people have an understanding of what academy is all about. Okay, so one of the things that uh, is very strong for me is about helping people understand their context of life. Our context is often invisible to us. So, uh, you know, people don't know who they are. They do not know who they are. See, they think when you ask them, who are you? Oh, I'm you know, this job title, or I play this role, or, you know, whatever, you know, I'm a mom, I'm a business owner, I'm a this, I'm a that. I'm a... But you want, when I take all of those things away, because they're just labels, who are you then? You know, that's what I want to know. I don't care how much money you got in the bank. I don't care what car you drive. Who are you when nobody is looking? And, you know, one of the things that COVID really brought home for me is that people do not want to know who they are, you know, and the source of their leadership is in that inquiry. And, you know, the, the sad thing about that is that I think most people would end their suffering if they started that inquiry because they would be able to remove from themselves all the things that are causing the confusion, all the things that are causing the mental health issues, all the things that are causing them to not have the emotional capacity to deal with whatever life is throwing at them. And a lot of what this business is born out of, it's born out of helping young people have the skills to deal with whatever life throws at them. Mm. Now, Jenny, I mean, obviously I love what you're talking about, you know, the context of life and how you say it's invisible. I mean, of course it's invisible. Fish do not see the water that they swim in and neither can people see the air that they breathe in. It's only until somebody walks into a room and says, wait a minute, what's that smell? Or why is it so filthy in here? But the person was in there and you're like, are you not? You're not comprehending what's happening. And that's what other people's lives are. And you brought about a very interesting subject where the pandemic sort of brought people back to themselves because for two it was a gift <laughs> for two it was a gift <laughs> but you know what they did yeah. they went into distraction they went into drugs they went into pornography they went into work they went into gaming they went into anything that would not have them look within themselves you know <laughs> look at all of those industries they all boomed during covid that tells you something <laughs> absolutely i mean i mean obviously if you really look at it, you did mention that people don't want to know who they are. That that stuff is scary, all right, for a lot of people. And if somebody gets around to understanding their true essence, like you were saying, I don't want you to define you by your work, your car, your everything else, because all of those things, if you look at it in the pandemic, we we're not driving anywhere. So your car is just a hunk of metal. We mm. were not going to jobs. So that meant what we actually are fighting about is not needed in the world. And if you also look at maybe some of the clothes that we put on or whatever, it's just landfill at the end of the day, because we were very comfortable in oodies and pajamas. So, <laughs> yes. so much. So much of what happened in the pandemic, that's the reason why so many people don't, because I don't think people can handle the truth. Yeah, and, you know, I, and it's, for me, it's like, it's probably my biggest competitor is that, right? But the, um, the truth is that um, when you can know yourself in that way, you know, people talk about having confidence because they put their hands on their hips like the Superman pose, you know, and for me, it's just like, look, that might work temporarily, but we're talking about a conviction in yourself that is unshakable, that 
you know, you walk into the room and there's a presence about who you are because you're so connected to who you are. You know, that anchor, instead of trying to put it in other people to try and find who you are, it's inside of you and you know who you are and nobody can take you off that, you know, and you, and you know where you're going and nobody can take you off that, you know, and that, that's where your true strength and power is. And, and that's what's missing for people when they don't go on that inquiry to find out. You know, it's an amazing inquiry. It really is. And that's where true freedom is, I believe. Love that. I love that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know a little something. Indulge me if you can. You see, when, when we were growing up, right, um, when you get to age 13 or 16, you know, the village elders will call you in and sit you down, talk to you nicely and showcase to you what the next stage is. And they will probably tap you on the shoulder and say, it's your turn to lead. And pretty much from then on, you would then go around the village, you know, look at what other people were doing. So you could go to a cobbler, you could go to a hunter, you could go to whatever skill set that interests you and you become an apprentice of that person because now you are now supposed to create your own means of production. And I kind of feel like that it's the sort of thing that academy is bringing to the table, some sort of tap on the shoulder for kids to then say, hey, you, it's your turn to lead and stop acting like a baby now. Yeah, I mean, and it's about helping young people cultivate those skills at the beginning Right. Because, you, you know, you and I talked about this, like there's no point in tapping somebody on the shoulder at 35, 40, 50, 60 and saying, right, we're going to put you in leadership development training now. You know, these are skills that are cultivated over a lifetime. And if you if you're starting with young people, you know, you, you give them time and space because this leadership program, it's not about a tick and flick you know, it's not about this this research and that research. This is lived experience, you know, and this is about what it means to be a human being. You don't get that in a book. <laughs> you get that from living life. Absolutely. And obviously, um, what would be the best way that people can get started on this journey? Um. What is the best way to get started? Well, I guess uh, it's really about making some decisions, you know, like uh, what is working about your life? What isn't working? And what are you prepared to do to start an inquiry about, you know, how to make some of those changes? You know, I think it's important to understand, like, if you're constantly bombarded with distraction, be it your phone, TV, things like that, you don't get to hear the quiet voices and the quiet messages that are speaking to you that are for your betterment and for your ultimate happiness, you know? So maybe a very easy place to start is to carve out some time to be with yourself. Spend five minutes, you know, go for a walk without any distractions at all. Lie on the couch, do some gardening, whatever it is. You know, I met I met a young lady recently, and this is no criticism on her at all, but she told me she uses her mobile phone in the shower. <laughs> and that when I talked to her about some quiet time, um, that didn't exist for her. She never has quiet time. She never has time without that phone in her hand or, you know, in front of a screen. And like I was a little horrified because how do you get connected with yourself if you're always tuned into something or someone else, you know? So that would be the place to start. <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't think, I don't think that's her fault though. Have you, yeah. have you watched TikTok yourself? You know what I mean? They, they no, I, I, I am not on TikTok. <laughs> They they make you so 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 engaged. You you have no time for anything else, and um, especially these days where Netflix is now slowly turning into, you know, that nagging uh, spouse or partner. You know, it asks you if you're not giving it any attention. Are you still watching? 
or says, okay, <laughs> the next episode is in five seconds, okay, do whatever you're doing, otherwise you're going to miss out. And it's like, wait a minute, I'm paying for this, all right? I'm not paying for, uh, you know, being held hostage and things of that nature. But I, I think I think that's, that's why you're there, Jenny, because if people are taking their mobiles to their bathroom, then wh wh where, where do those shower thoughts come from? Or even singing in the shower is no longer a thing, right? Yeah, and then and then it becomes: Are you? Is your mobile or your device a slave to you? Is your money a slave to you, or are you a slave to those things? You know, it's that power dynamic, and and when that power dynamic is not in the right order, um, you become a slave to those things. Mm. You know, you're you're no longer in control of yourself. Absolutely, and you don't even know it. <laughs> so that's that's an issue right there like we talked about fish not seeing the water that they swim in now is this where a guide or a map would come into place so that because so people are lost they are going to need some sort of direction and i think you've got something for them that could actually help them not have their phones in the shower well yeah i mean let me tell you a, a really quick story it's um it's in a book by Price Pritchard called U Squared. And if anyone's heard me speak before, they might have heard me tell this story. But um, Pritchard starts the book with a story about a fly. So he's in a cafe and he's watching this fly. And the fly is flying towards what it perceives as freedom. But the, the fly doesn't understand the paradigm of a window. So it's just seeing the green and the freedom that's out there and it's going for it hits the window, oh. you know, um, shakes it off, hits the window sill, and it's just like, okay, that, that didn't work. I'm going to try again. Gets up, flies towards the window, hits the window, lands on the window sill, shakes it off again. And, like, it's doing this rotation a few times, right? And um, Pritchard makes the point that no amount of trying harder is going to get this fly through that window. Um, but what the fly doesn't realize is with no more skill, no more effort, no more knowledge, no more anything, if it just turned 180 degrees in the opposite direction, it would get the freedom that it seeks. Now, when I first read this, it would have been easy to misconstrue what he meant by hard work, right? So don't mishear me. Hard work, as it turns out, is the work that you need to do to overcome the negative self-talk and the inner critic. That's the hard work that needs to be done, right? Because when you understand those, those mechanisms in your mind and you understand how they work to stop you from actually achieving what you want to do, then you will actually accelerate further, faster. But most of us are not cognizant of the, those effects so how those thoughts affect not only our emotions but then how they stop us from actually doing what we want to do and achieving our goals so for me you know when I read this it was 2021 and I was in Kananara and um, I wanted to live the experience of this book I didn't want to just read it and then put it aside I wanted to understand it in my DNA <laughs> What does he mean by all of this stuff, right? Because in my own life, and you'll recall, I started this conversation with not this freaking again because I was hitting up against that window and couldn't see that there was this window there, you know? So I was trying to find a way to get past it. Anyway, um, I decided to run an experiment and that that's a whole other story, um, an experiment in the outback and it was successful. But the biggest component about that experiment was to see, could I break through my own paradigm of this window? And from that, I, I developed what I call the map of potential. So for those that are listening rather than um, you know watching, the map of potential, if you can imagine, is just a circle. That's it. And each of us will encounter things in life where we butt up against the edge of our circle. 
Yeah. So you know that those experiences, like whether you're in business and you have to make cold calls, you get that anxiety kind of feeling and you're going to have two choices, right? You're going to either regress inside of your circle into the known and the comfort zone, or you're going to go outside of your circle and you're going to make those calls and you're going to get connected to people. And that's the map of potential is helping people get physically, emotionally, mentally connected to that point where they hit the edge of their potential and they can make a moment to moment decision as to whether they're going to regress and stay in their comfort zone or they're going to expand and go out and do something um, that's beyond even their knowledge of how to do. Wow. I quite like that. And um how can people get this map of potential to start off? Sure, um, Prosper. So uh, the best way to reach me would be to um, connect with me on LinkedIn or Facebook. My website is currently in development right now. So we're about to launch the Academy, which is acadame.co. And um, but the best way in the meantime is is LinkedIn or Facebook. And uh, I can... Uh, I'll, I'll be releasing some uh, training around the map of potential very shortly too. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I'll make sure that all those links are in the show notes below, you, you know, because while you were talking about the fly just hitting the wall and if only just turns 180 degrees and goes back, that's where all the freedom is. Um, you reminded me of the scene in, is it Forrest Gump where he just kept running and running and running and he got tired and everybody was just following him and he just turned around and people started asking him, so what's happening? He's like, I, I'm tired. And he's just walking back just like that. Like it, 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 it signifies how everybody just runs a business. They just keep going, going, whatever comes up, AI, new technology, new platforms, they're just plowing through and going and they gathering all these followers that are just also sitting there not knowing what's supposed to be happening. Something and went wrong. Try again, <laughs> <a> few seconds. <laughs> and things of that nature, you know, with with um, you know, uh, speakers just speaking while you're speaking all at the same time, you know, because <laughs> because that's yeah. the world we now live in. All right. And so many people have not been able to actually figure out what is it that I'm doing? What are my boundaries? What What is the actual potential I'm looking to create? And I think with a map like that, the map of potential, it will definitely put them on the straight and narrow. So thank you so much for putting that um, you know, on there. Now, we've obviously come full circle. All right. From where it all started. And, um, you know, you began this journey, um, you know, with introducing us to your daughter, who obviously then led you to have an understanding of what choice and consequence is. And now you're sending the elevator down, teaching other people how to be, do and have a um, happier existence as well. What's next? What can people expect from Jenny uh, moving forward? Well, you know, um, this business for me is about a, a legacy, you know, and as, as you've just rightly pointed out, you know, I spent the last, you know, 24 years invested in raising my daughter. And for me, the rest of my life is about raising other young people, if I can put it like that, and investing everything that I've learned in the next generation of leaders so that they can be everything that they can be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's one thing, though, that um, you mentioned, you know, you said you don't measure success by money, but the ability to be with yourself. Um, for those at the back of the room, if you can give us a couple of pointers as to, first of all, what that should look like in their lives and how they can actually you know, get started with that because as we established, that's one of the hardest things for people to do to just be by themselves. They'll rather just go to so many other things and things of that nature. I just want us to have that one last thing that people can take away from this call today. I, I wish it was that one last thing, but, you know, like spending a little bit of time by yourself, with yourself, whether it's journaling even as, a, as an option, just getting your thoughts down, is that you start to become acquainted with who you are 
and what you're here for, um, which gives you purpose. You know, so you want to just you you do want to sit there and and understand. You want to develop not only awareness why you do what you do, but an active awareness so that you have the ability to change the results that you're getting, changing the decisions that you're making. Um, that map of potential and what I've explained to you is just the tip of the iceberg. We that it's a very multi-dimensional map and we use it for lots of things. But really, you know, you want to Jim Rowan says it beautifully, I think he says. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job because if, you, if you've got the skill and the capability within you, you can do anything in life. You, you know, whatever you put your mind to, you can actually become successful. So who do you want to be known as? What character do you want to cultivate within yourself so that when people encounter you, whether they do so directly because they've just met you or because they do so indirectly because they hear other people talking about you, what do you want them to be saying? You know, like how, how much time are we spending cultivating who we are? That's that's where I would start. Is start with you and <laughs> get to know you. Because <laughs> you, you're magnificent, you know? I like that. I like that. Now, as we come to the conclusion of this show, you gave reference to two books, you know, that you have read and obviously have made a significant impact to you um maybe one day somebody is going to be saying that about a book that you have written to maybe maybe i i am currently writing um uh so my story i guess is very much about dealing with whatever life throws at you and the the skills and the lessons that i've learned along the way so we are aiming for um publication by the end of this year and I'm pushing very hard to <laughs> make that happen and the book itself is called The Hangovers of Trauma and it's all about understanding so you know there's what happens to us and then there's how we perceive the world and then there's reality so our perceptions and reality are often quite different and there's a distortion that happens in the middle so it's helping people understand that distortion um, so that they can, as I said, make new decisions, experience different things and get a different result in their life. Absolutely. I can't wait to get my hands on that book. Um, I mean, obviously, there's so much that would have happened for people to be where they're at right now. And as you have eloquently said, your life only just began when, you know, um, you know, certain things happened in your life. So I bet hangovers of trauma is going to be a bestseller and you know you just committed the ultimate scene there jenny um just now there did i have what did i do <laughs> putting well, it out there so prosper people, people <laughs> do not mention writing a book and publishing it and not uh promise to come and talk about it on the online prosperity show Oh, okay. All right. Well, I would be delighted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. Well, thank you so much, Jenny, for sharing your incredible journey uh, and valuable insights with us today. I know we didn't cover much. I just wanted to just highlight the important parts that make you a credible source for being um, the leadership champion that you have now become. And as you have said, this is all through lived experience. It's not something that you just picked up off of a book or walked off of some burning coals on a weekend and started to call yourself a leadership consultant. <laughs> all right. So I really, really appreciate um, the energy and also the journey that you have taken because had you not done that, you wouldn't have had a good story to tell on the online prosperity show. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Prosper. It was a pleasure to be here. Fantastic. <laughs> and I'm sure our viewers have actually gained a lot from your experiences and strategies. And for those that are watching right now, if you found this episode as inspiring as I did, just be sure to maybe rewatch it this time around with a... Um, a lime juice with honey and warm water on the side as we um, have been taught already or watch it with a loved one who might be going through stuff and not clearly understanding that if they keep hitting, um, you know, a window, there could be systems, processes and people that could literally help them be, do and have a happier 
existence. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to the Online Prosperity Show for more insightful content like this. Until next time, bye for now. <music>